What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with part two of the Raw 580 build. So as you can see in part one, we left off with getting the cyclic servos done, low upper frame sides done, transmission mounted, little grommets and all that good stuff mounted into place. So now we are going to get the head assembly done and try to get the whole entire frame completed in this video. And then we can move on. So we are on page 10 of the manual. We have bag for page 10, box one. So I'm gonna get this stuff all laid out and let's get to building the head. So first thing we got is the radius arm assembly. So you'll see here on this side, it says SAB and on this side it does not. So we are going to have SAB facing out of the helicopter. So it's gonna be a simple assembly. We're gonna take one bearing Gonna push it into the plastic. These are plastic arms. We're gonna take a little spacer. Gonna drop that little guy down in there. We're gonna take our next bearing and we are going to push together just like that. Simple and easy. One is assembled. Grab the next one, do the same thing. Bearing, little copper spacer or brass. Next bearing, bearings can only go in one way as they are shouldered and you are good to go. So now we can move on to step two. All right, so we have the arms laid out now. Again, you have SAB on one side that is going to be going out, facing out of the helicopter. So in this part, we are going to need some retaining compound. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of retaining compound on the bearing. So just get a little bit of retaining compound around the outside of the bearing like this. And then you are going to slide the bearing up into place. So these are shouldered as well. So we will wipe excess off once we get it assembled. But you're going to want to push just like that. And then take one of these little copper spacers. Drop it down in there. Take another little bit or take another bearing with some retaining compound. All the way around. And then push that one into here as well. Get a little bit of uh, alcohol on a paper towel for when you're done. And clean off the excess. Just like that. And there you go. Now do the same for your second arm. And you will be good to go. I'll do that one off camera and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next step is the linkage rod assembly. So if you notice on this guy right here, you're going to see an L and an R. So that stands for left-handed threads, right-handed threads. So that means which way that threads are cut, so which way you spin them on. So we are going to grab our trusty old little T-pin here. We're gonna start with the right-handed thread side. We're gonna grab our link end, and we're gonna start it by hand. And this can be a little tricky, but get it started by hand. And then once you get it started by hand, you can grab that cool little tool that they give you. So they give you this little cool tool. On one end, it's cut in for the linkages ends, and on this end, it looks like a hex for something. I'm sure we'll figure that out as we go. So now we're just gonna grab our link, and we're going to turn. Now remember, this is right-handed thread. So we're gonna run this down, and they give you a measurement, total overall measure, total overall measurement, sorry, I can't speak, is 62 to 63 millimeters. So we are going to run this guy down like so, we're going to grab our next one. And remember, this is left-handed thread, so now we got to go left. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing. We are going to, but we're going to turn this one to the left. This little tool right here makes it really nice for making these. Wow, super nice. Okay, we're going to make them about equal. That looks about right. And now we're going to grab a micrometer, and we're going to see the overall length. So we have a micrometer here. And we are going to take this and we need 62 to 63 overall. So we are at 62.20 exactly. So 62, 62 good enough. So we're going to leave this one alone and we're going to make another one to match it. So I'm going to do that off camera but you guys understand how it works. Left hand, right hand thread. Get this one made and we'll move on to the head block. Okay, so if you notice here, I have O-rings laid out. We have 90s and 70s. Depending on how you wanna fly the helicopter, and these are your actual hard head dampeners. 
So depending on how you want to fly the helicopter for mild 3D or sport flying to hard 3D. So if it's mild 3D and sport flying, you're going to take a 70 is going to be your internal. So that's going to be the first dampener. And then you're going to have a 90. But if you want it to be ex for extreme hard 3D, you want 90, 90, 90, 90. So I'm assuming you would have to buy another set of dampeners. Is from what I gathered. I might be wrong on that, but let me know. So now we're going to start with the head assembly. I just can't get over how incredible the build quality is on the SAB parts. It's just machining quality is incredible. I love the 13 degrees positive and negative pitch on the head Let's block. Let's assemble the head. So we have our head block laid out, we have our feathering shaft, or let's assemble the head block, not the head, the full assembly yet. So we have this stuff, what they recommend, the micro lube, is the grease that SAB recommends. So that is what we are using for the build. So we are going to take some of this micro lube and we are going to lube up the O-ring. So we're gonna assemble it to the manual. So we're gonna put the 70 O-rings first. So we'll just put, a little bit on the 70s and then we are going to slide those into the head block first and then we're going to put a little bit on the 90 and we are going to slide those into the head block wrap it around a little bit just to lube them up and then of course when we're done we'll clean the head block all together get those pushed down in there nice and neatly and then we're going to take our hard dampener so it is going to go ridge line out. So that ridge line is going to be what rides for, towards the bearing side. So we're going to push on that and then let's just go ahead and assemble the other side really quickly the same way. So again, 70 first, we're gonna put a little bit of this micro lube on there. Get the O-ring all lubed up. And then we're gonna grab a 90, put a little bit of micro lube on the 90. Get that thrown in there. And once we get this all assembled, we'll go through with some uh, with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol and clean all the excess off just so it looks good. And then now we're gonna take our other head dampener, again, ridge side out. And then we're gonna wanna put a little bit on our feathering shaft just to help grease up your feathering shaft, get that slide in there nice and neatly, and you don't want to put no uh, dry bearings or dry uh, O-rings because you'll tear them. So we're just going to go ahead and slide this assembly together. There we go. That's what the grease is for. There we go. So now we got this whole assembly together. We'll wipe off the excess. Okay, slide that dampener back down. And now we have a completed head block and we can move on to the next step after we clean off all this grease. Okay, so next step is we are going to need these arms. So we are on bag or I'm sorry, box one, page 11 for the bag set that we are on right now. So I already went ahead and cleaned the screws. Make sure you clean your screws. They are covered in machining oil. So we are gonna grab our head block and we are gonna grab one arm. So of course, SAB facing out. And I recommend you take your screw, put it through the arm first, and then you're gonna get a washer, a tiny, tiny little, spacer washer you're going to put that on and then i would recommend putting your loctite on so that way you're not pushing loctite through the bearings put your loctite on and then it is going to go into the bottom hole so it is going to go into this hole right here and then of course screw this down Tighten it up. And then you're going to grab this little plastic arm and SAB facing out. Grab your another screw. And it is going to go 
through the bearings, you're gonna have to work those little uh, brass inserts that we put in here into the right place. So you might have to grab yourself like something like a T-pin or a small driver and move the brass to where it fits, just like that. And then we are going to, oh, and I put it in backwards, so flip it around. Okay, because again, we want SAB facing out. So we're gonna put a dab of Loctite. And then it's going to go on there like this. Screw that down, tighten it up. So now you should have something that looks like this. And again, SAB is facing out. SAB facing out. So now we're going to flip it over and do the other side and then we'll start the blade grip assembly. So now it's time to assemble the blade grips. So you'll see I have it lined out here. The only thing missing is the thrust bearing. It's off to the side because I packed them with grease and don't want to get grease on my little mat. So we have our blade grip feather and shaft bolt and we have our first washer which is going to be a small diameter to fit the bolt and then we have a small inner diameter and a larger inner diameter. And they're only about like a half a millimeter difference, but they are different. So check them on your feathering shaft. You'll see that the small ones are tight on the shaft. The larger inner diameter are a little looser on the shaft. So it's gonna go feathering shaft bolt, first washer, smaller inner diameter, and then your thrust bearing, a larger outer inner diameter, and then your copper washer, and then your blade grip. So it's going to be assembled like this so right there so now let's assemble so we are going to take and we are going to assemble it the way it's going to drop in so it will be done some larger inner diameter smaller inner diameter thrust bearing and they're already packed as you can see remember close side towards the feathering shaft bolt so let's drop this guy down and get it pushed onto here and then we are going to take the next larger outer diameter close these two guys together our little copper washer and we're going to take our blade grip we're going to drop this entire assembly down into the main bearings now remember the bearings are already pre-loaded meaning they're already installed so the bearings are already in the blade grip when you take the blade grip out of the package so now we have our bearing load pressed in there so now make sure you clean your feathering shaft bolts because they do have machining oil on them just like a lot of other head part screws so some rubbing alcohol clean them i already cleaned mine so now we are going to take a four millimeter allen wrench because these are four millimeters we're going to put a washer on this guy here and we're going to put some blue Loctite we want to get blue Loctite on multiple sides of the bolt we need this guy to be strong we need it to be good and secure so now we'll set this thing aside for a second we'll set that bolt aside we are going to take our loaded bearing and we are going to push it easily into the head and then we will drop our screw. We're just gonna run it down till it snugs up. Okay, and then let's get the other side done and then we will torque it down. So, again, smaller inner diameter, thrust bearing, Remember, flat side towards the bolt. Larger inner diameter. Copper washer or copper spacer. Now in the instruction manual, it does tell you that there is a bag of shims included. It's this little bag right here. It is 11-4. So these are a bag of shims. Now set them aside because in the instruction manual, it'll tell you that after what do you say? After 40 to 50 flights, check the preload. So after we assemble it, we're going to check preload. And then after we fly it 40 to 50 times, we want to check the preload again. And if we get some preload, then 
we want to make sure that we pull the head back apart and add a shim accordingly. So it is normal for you to get a little play according to Sab. It is normal to have a tiny bit of play after 40 to 50 flights. And they say it's also normal for you to have a really tight head in the beginning and that it says it is normal, especially with the 90-90 O-rings, which we're doing a 70-90, to feel tight after assembly. Uh, the preload is usually high when the helicopter is brand new. The preload would loosen up after two to five flights. Please check the preload after a few flights. So we will check the preload after uh, two to three flights. If we are happy, then we'll leave it. If it loosens up a little bit, then we can always add shims accordingly. So now let's get this guy down in here. Get this bolt started. Of course, I couldn't find any of my four millimeter drivers, so I'm having to use an actual Allen wrench with a ball end. And it is not fun. So let's get this to snug up and then we can grab. Okay, so now we got that snugged up. So let's go ahead, put this side in like this. Let's grab our next four millimeter side like this and torque it down. Okay. So now it is tight but free. So it's actually smooth. So now our head is assembled and we can move on to doing the arms. So now we're gonna do the arms. So the arms are super simple, super easy. We're going to grab our head assembly, grab our arm. We are going to take a bolt. Again, please make sure you clean all these head parts with rubbing alcohol. They do have machining oil on them and we do not want that for a good, strong bond. So we are going to go through here, no washer, no shim. And then this guy is going to just screw into here. Fits on there very nice and neat. Snug it down. We'll go back through after we're done and clean all this up. And then while we're on this one, grab your two millimeter. So that was a three millimeter, and this, or a two and a half millimeter bolt. This is a two millimeter driver. Grab your ball end. These were cleaned with Loctite as well. And thread them on. And then you'll go ahead and do the same for the other side. Snug it down. So now we'll do the same on the other side and move on to the swash plate. So next is a swash plate. And the swash plate's gonna be super, super simple. You're gonna have your ball ends. You're gonna have, this is going to be your main Jesus bolt. This is going to be your lock nut. And these are gonna be your two pinch bolts that go through the head like so. So. On your swash plate, you're just going to, of course, make sure you clean all screws with rubbing alcohol because there is machining oil. And you're just going to want to screw the swash plate ball down, tighten it up. They are all the same size. So now we're just going to go through and do that all around every one of them. And then for the guide pin, I'm not going to put that one in yet because when you get sliding the swash plate down on the main shaft, and then I will go ahead and install this pin. That way it's easier because then you can slide it through this way and then tighten it down. So we're gonna get all these Loctited into place and get the swash plate put on, and then we will slide the head down and get that put on. So now let's throw the head on. So we have our head done. We have our swash plate all Loctited and put into place. Now you'll notice on the head, if you can see it, that there is a round side and a oblong side. So your nut is going to go on this side and the round side of course is going to be for your bolt. So we are going to push the head down and then we're going to grab our bolt and hopefully figure out where the hole is. There we go. You don't need Loctite because this is a lock nut, so no Loctite. Remember that. You don't need Loctite with the lock nut. Loctite will eat plastic. A lock nut is plastic. So if you Loctite a lock nut, you are defeating the purpose of the lock nut. I have seen it on many different helicopters, especially ones that other people build, where they love to Loctite the lock nut. Okay, so now that is done. 
So now we're going to grab the pinch bolts. So that was a three millimeter bolt. The pinch bolts are two millimeter. Those do get locked tight. And they will go through here. And just screw those down and they will pinch together on the head block. So we're just gonna snug, get the other one done and then we'll tighten them both evenly. So that way we got a nice even tightness. And again, you don't need a lot of Loctite. You just need a, enough to do its job, but you don't want to overdo it. So we're going to run this bolt down and snug it. So now we're going to tighten this side, tighten this side. Okay, now take your swashplate links and the straights are going to go right here. Like this and then spin the head this way again on the straight side of the swash plate are going to go these links nice good snap feel and then here you're going to want to make sure the SAB is out and then of course we will adjust and modify these links as need be in the next step actually because then we can get a measurement on how far everything needs to be for a perfectly level swash plate. So there we go. Now everything is done. Swash plate is on. I'm going to take some of this micro lube and I'm going to put some micro lube on the main shaft just to free it up and help it slide, which it does slide nice and smooth now. And then we'll move on to the next so step. We went ahead, made up the servo links super easy, did them to 45 millimeters exactly like manual calls. They're both right-handed thread. You just thread them together. Very simple. So next step is going to be the tensioner assembly. So we have 14-1, 14-2, 14-3. So 14-1 is going to be set up like so. Two and then three. So I'm going to get the links thrown on real quick. They're just as simple as popping them here and here. And they're good to go. Again, the camera set up on a tripod. And we'll start with the assembly of one, two, and three. For some reason, it decided to stop recording right when I was in the middle and didn't save. So we did one. We'll do the other one. So you'll notice there's a little copper sleeve in there. It tells you in the manual that it wants retaining compounds. So I'm going to put a little bit here. Green retaining. We're going to slide it through. I'm going to put that little copper washer on, a little bit more retaining compound, and then it is going to get put on. I've already explained this, but it got deleted. So you have a flat side and then a grooved outside. So the flat side down, grooved outside, start that bolt by hand. It is a two and a half millimeter driver. And then just run this down, tighten it up. Make sure both are tight. Now make sure that they spin freely, which they do. So now this part of the tensioner is done and we can move on to the second part of the tensioner. So second tensioner, you'll notice the way that this is, kind of looks like a, like a goldfish look to it. So you're gonna want the long side down, the whole side facing down. And then we're gonna do the same thing again. It calls for retaining compound. So there's no copper washer on this side. Each side of the pulley is the same, so it has that little brass uh, insert in it. Sometimes that are off, just use a little T-pin, move the little brass insert out of the way or center it. And we're going to slide our bolt through, a little bit more retaining compound on the threads. And then it's going to go this way, bottom up. You'll notice that the bottom has a little recess, like a built-in type of washer. So we'll screw that down. Again, two and a half millimeter driver. Tighten it up. It's free. And then this is the way it should look once it's assembled. So now we'll do the third one. All right, so now we're on the last part of the tensioner assembly for this page. So you're gonna have the tensioner that you just assembled. You're gonna have a black long bar. It's gonna have a completely flat side you're gonna have a little bevel with two holes and then a beveled edge. So the beveled edge is going to be away from you while you're building. The complete flat side is going to be towards you while you're building. And then the beveled edge with the two holes side by side will be on the left side of you while you're building. So it'll look something like this. So now you're gonna have a little metal anodized piece and you're gonna have a spring. 
And on this spring, you'll notice you have a straight side and then you'll have a more long out, bent out side, kind of like that. So the it is going to go together like this. That's gonna slide down in there and it's gonna look something like this while you drop stuff. So it's pretty simple that. So it is going to look like this. And I can't get it to where it looks like this without it coming apart into a million pieces. But it's going to look like this. If you can see that. So then you're going to take your bolt. And you want to put a little bit of retaining compound on it. And then you're going to slide that bolt through here. And then you're going to take your spring that you assembled. It's going to be the third hole. You want to drop that down like this. And you're going to take your copper washer, you're going to slide that down here like this. A little bit more retaining compound on the threads. And then this is going to get assembled onto here. Like this, on the last, on the first hole. So then go ahead and screw that together. Tighten this down so you want it to be just set up just like this. So you want the left side facing straight, your third hole there. So that way it kind of just hangs here, but this is going to come around to here in the helicopter. So you don't want it to be slapping against the actual bracket, but you want it to be positioned like this, third hole and this first hole to be 90 to All the right, left. So next step is going to be the rails with the idler that we just assembled. So now these are going to go in a certain way. So we're going to start with the side with our idler tension pulley. So if you notice in the frame, there is a cutout here. So you're going to want to insert this idler pulley to where it sits like this and can move. Let's see if we can do it this way and give you guys a better view. So we want this idler pulley to sit in here with this lines up. Okay, it's move, but it stops. So this side of it sits out. Your thread holes are right there. And just for sake, I'm going to start a screw into here just to hold it here. And I'm going to start another screw into here just to hold it here. Okay, so you want... Now, if you're looking at the helicopter, it's the left side. So you want the... Idler to sit here so it can move like this. Okay, so then we're gonna run Loctite on all these screws and then this one is gonna do the same, very simple. Curve side in, we're gonna set it down inside the mainframe and screw it down, very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead, run all the screws, Loctite them all of course, and then we'll see what it looks so like. Just like that, we got left side and right side, your tensioner is in and working. It should be looking like this. All of our screws are Loctited, beauty ringed on both sides. So now the next step is going to be taking the tensioner pulleys that we, the first ones that we did, and you'll notice there is a raised side and a lowered side. So the side that has this tensioner sprung on it is going to get the raised side. So if you notice, you have a screw hole here and a screw hole here. So you're gonna put this little tensioner bar onto this side like this. So this, you're gonna do a, so this is gonna sit down in here like this, okay? And then it's gonna be a through bolt. So it's gonna be a through bolt, and then a cut and a washer, and then Loctite. So it's gonna look like this, through bolt washer. And then we are going to go ahead, try to do this where you guys can see it, and I don't lose both my little copper washer, or my little washers, they're not copper. Let me turn this to where I can get the driver in here. Okay, and then the same with this side. Sorry if you guys can't see this or I am knocking you around. I'm really not trying to. So it'll look like this when you're done. Again, raise side towards your tensioner side. And if you notice when you're looking down, your pulleys will be lined up. So when you look at it this way, your two pulleys should be lined up. If you have it backwards or the other way around, those two pulleys will not be lined up. 
All right, next step is going to be the lower main side frames. And once we get this on the sitting on its skids, we will wrap up part two of right, this so build. Next step is going to be the lower frame side. So I already went ahead and put the stickers. Now they give you a couple different color options. I decided, well, not me, but David decided, because this is his helicopter, and I agreed with it, that we wanted to match the canopy. So on the Goblin Raw 580, the canopy is green on one side and orange on the other. So we decided to go with green on one frame side and orange on the other side to match the canopy, and we'll do the same on the tail fin. So now this is gonna be the front of the helicopter, this is gonna be the back of the helicopter. So we are going to install our frame side. So now I already put the little spacers on, double-sided tape spacer, save some time. So now you'll notice on the frame side, we already put these little inserts in. Now it is going to be as simple as just putting it down like this and running your screws in. Of course, clean your screws, put it through your little beauty ring, some blue lock, yeah, some blue Loctite, run it down and screw the frame side into place just like that. Super simple. I'm gonna get that done and we'll see what right. it looks like. So we got the lower frame sides on. Now I know I just said previously to Loctite these screws, but do not Loctite these screws because they are going into lock nuts. Like we explained before, you don't Loctite lock nuts. So our screws are installed, our lower frame sides are on. So now we can move on to the skids. So now we got green on the left side, orange on the right side of the helicopter to match the canopy so now we're going to move on to installing assembling the skids and getting them installed okay so we have the landing gear spread out here so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to put a little dab of loctite on this one two millimeter screw uh, everything for the landing gear is two millimeter driver so we're going to slide our screw through and we are going to install these little end caps and we want Loctite facing the inside of the helicopter and we are using the outside holes of the skids themselves. So we are going to get this one snugged up, okay? And then we're going to get the other one snugged up, a little bit of Loctite on it. And then we're gonna do the same for all four of these so you're going to run all four of them down just like this so you're gonna do two for the front two for the back so now that we get these tightened up remember not to go super tight because you're screwing through plastic so we're gonna put another one here again make sure that the lock nut is facing the inside of the helicopter same thing lock nut on the inside of the helicopter outside hole so we're gonna go ahead and get all four of these done and then we got all four mounting tabs two on each uh, front and rear of the skid. So now it is time for the front canopy clip. So SAB is going to face down. It is basically going to sit down in there like this. So another two millimeter driver, but you want with the coarse threaded screws, simple as line the holes up and tighten the screws down that easy. So we're just going to do two real quick and then I'll do the other two and then we'll move on to gluing the pipe ends into the skids. So you're gonna screw these down like this and like this. And then you're going to, for your skids, I've touched on this in other videos, but you have your skids and you have your end caps and these will fall out. So take yourself a little bit of medium CA and just run it around the inside, that medium CA, run it around the inside and then take your skid cap and push it down into place spin it for a second push and let it dry and do the same on the other and the other three ends so we got the landing skids together we have not tightened them down or put the set screws in for the pipes yet because we want to get the actual mainframe bolted down and then we can adjust the pipes so now remember we have lock nuts no lock tight so we're going to just set Half of it down first. We're gonna grab our screws with our beauty rings. It is going to be a two and a half millimeter driver. Let's get one started. Just run it down. We don't wanna tighten it up yet. Just snug it and then slide the front forward. Get that one tightened down or at least started. I recommend not tightening nothing down yet till you get all four into place. So you're just gonna do that all the way around, snug them up, 
like this, and then we'll come back and set the pipe right, So now we're gonna lock the pipes down. So SAB recommends 40 millimeters in the actual manual. So I'm going to probably say 40 millimeters from the back of the skid here to here is going to be a little too far. It's gonna cover the division part of the sign. So I'm going to set mine to 35 millimeters. And I'm going to only tighten this one down till it starts to grip. Once it starts to grip and we feel it grip, we can finish setting. All right, so now let's just make sure we set our 35 millimeters. Pipes are straight, snug it down, and then do the same on the other three and measure them. So we got our set screws installed, pipes are locked down, measured. We're 35 millimeters is what I decided what looks good, a little bit of inward angle. Everything's measured front to back, back to front, all that good stuff because something that drives me absolutely nuts is uneven skids. Really drives me crazy. So our skids are locked down. Our lower mainframe's done. So that is going to wrap up part two of the SAB Goblin Raw 580 build. So I hope you guys enjoy this build series. I know these videos are a little long. I really try to keep them under 30 minutes, 25 minutes. This one's going to probably be closer to 40 minutes. It's just a lot to build in a video series. So I'm trying... Hopefully you guys like these videos. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out. So part three, we'll get to installing the motor ESC and all that stuff. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If these videos helped you out. If you liked the video, give it a like, subscribe. It helps me out. I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed, so please subscribe. Like the video, share the video, and have a great day.